everyone, this is Becca from Becca's Music Room. I'm a music teacher who talks about teacher tips, teacher life, teacher doors, and all things that might hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. Today I am here to talk a little more about Google Slides. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share so that other people can find it as well. Now I posted a video about how I make my interactive games using Google Slides and I love doing that, first of all, and was really happy to share it with you. However, I realized after I did it that that might be a little more than what some people need, specifically because some of my teammates at school asked me to do a Google Slides tutorial for them where we just hopped on like a Microsoft team meeting and we went just really to the basics. Like, here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. And I realized that some of you might also need some of those really basic Google Slides skills. So today in this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing my screen so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you just how to use Google Slides from the basics so that you can help your students learn more, whether that is making a presentation for you to show your kids at school or whether that is something that you are giving them to do on their own. So hopefully this video will be really, really helpful. If you have any more specific questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will see see if I can answer them. If there's enough, I might even make another video about it. So if you are excited about a Google Slides tutorial, then get ready because we're going to hop right on in. Hello and welcome to the screen sharing portion of today's video. The first thing you should know about Google Slides is it is very, very similar to PowerPoint. So if you are like intimidated by Google Slides, it's really not scary. It's really self-explanatory. And it's very similar to PowerPoint if you are used to using PowerPoint. I find more people are used to using PowerPoint. So this is a new presentation. I literally just clicked new presentation and this is what we have. The first thing I always do when I come to Google Slides is delete these things because I don't like them. I like to be in charge of my own text boxes. Thank you, Google. But they always appear, I can't stand it. So we're just gonna go through like a couple really simple things first. I'm gonna assume you're doing this to make something for your students to use. So the first thing I wanna show you is that you can change the slide size. This is not necessarily necessary, um, but if you would like it, then you can use it. So come down here to file and then page setup and you can change the size. So you can do standard, which is what I actually prefer, Why two different wide screens, and then you can do custom and you can put in anything you want here. So if you were making like a worksheet that you wanted to print out, I always do this as eight and a half by 11 and then it will be paper size. Right now we're not making a worksheet, so I'm just gonna do a four by three because I just like this box better than the other box. I don't have a good reason for that, but you know, here we are. So now we have this. So we're gonna do something for the kids. I like to put some sort of border. So an easy way to do a border is to come to this button, shapes, and then just do a little box. And then you can change the colors of pretty much anything. So you can change the fill color. You can make it transparent, which is so helpful. Not necessarily right in here is it super helpful, but it is helpful. I don't like that. So what I'm actually gonna do is just make that white and then come to this little like pencil, which is the border. And we'll make the border purple because purple is fun. And then you can change how thick it is maybe by coming over here to border weight and changing how big it is. So now you can make it nice and big. You can also change the design. So you make it like dots. You can make it this Morse code looking thing, whatever, doesn't matter. So next up, I'm going to come over here and click text box. You can also go to insert and then text box. And I always make mine as big as wide as the whole thing so that when I come over here and click centered, then it is truly centered. So here I would want, um, let's say instruments of the orchestra because that is just always my fallback. That's not how you spell orchestra. 
All right, so then I'm gonna make it over here. Typically I would do your name, but you really don't need to have the kids include their name when you're doing things online. So I might use this as my title. If I wanna make it bigger, I can come up here and change the font size. I can also come over here and change the font. So if there's something else that you like better, and then we'll need to be bigger do that. You can change the color by coming over here to text color and you can make it whatever color you want. If you don't like any of these, go to custom and then you can pick whatever. So here I have this. Now if I wanted to have maybe like separate boxes where students are maybe responding to things, then I could come over here to text. So I wrote, there are lots of string instruments in the world, name some string instruments. Now, I like to kind of separate these by coming over to border and just giving it a border so I can see, oh, hey, here is something that I'm doing. And it just visually makes it significantly easier to look at. So I can have kids either type in here or I can make a new text box underneath. I will probably, for this one, just leave it here. And I always write, type your answer here because when you're working with children, you just wanna make things as easy as humanly possible. Now, there are other things you can do. So I'm trying very hard to make sure that you are only seeing like helpful things. So that's, and things kids can do. So type they can type into the text box. You could also have them like find pictures. I really enjoy this. So we might do um, find pictures of string instruments and put them in this box. I always like to make it really specific for where they're going to put things like pictures or if we're like dragging things then same thing and I'll show you that in a second so uh, then I give a little more directions so I'll say click insert picture or image I think is what it says search the web so what they're gonna do is they're gonna come to insert image search the web and this is also something you could do and then you can just drag it over. We're gonna wanna resize that because it's very, very large. And so they can add images. You could also add images if I would prefer, you know, to show them like, this is a violin. That's also something I can do. Y'all, I'm like talking with my hands and you cannot see my hands. I'm like pointing to the screen and I'm like, they don't know what I'm talking about. So here are a couple of things that you can add. Now, if I wanted them to also see some instruments in action, I can come over to insert. You can add audio, you can add all sorts of things. You can add charts and diagrams and tables and shapes, but I'm gonna click video and I'm gonna just click violin concerto. and pick something. Ooh, I love Mendelssohn. You can also put the URL in here and that would also work or go to Google Drive and insert a video that you came up with. Then you can change how big it's gonna be. So I'm gonna make mine small so it'll fit right there. You can change like when it's gonna start and all those kind of things. You can change the size that way. You can change where it's gonna go. You can give it a drop shadow, which is like a shadow behind it. You know all sorts of stuff. Let's do some drag and drop activities. So what I wanna do is I would like this same border and this same title to be on the next slide. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to right click or control click if you're on a laptop and I'm gonna click duplicate slide. You could also click new slide or click control M which is what I usually do for a new slide but I want that those same things. So I'm gonna duplicate and on my new slide, I don't need this. And I don't need this. And I don't need this. And I don't need this. So I just delete all those things and get rid of this box. 
Now what I'm gonna say is give some directions. So I'm gonna make a text box and I'll say, so what I want is I'm gonna put a box. So I'm gonna come up here to shapes, put a box. You could also do all of these other shapes. I'm just gonna do a box. And this one I want to be a color. So I'm gonna come to this little paint can and change the color. I like to make it nice and muted so you can see. And if you wanna change the border, you can do that too. Do that, makes it a little fancier. And then I'm gonna also add a little text box here that just says string instruments. Okay, so then I'm gonna come over to insert image, search the web. And we're gonna add just some images of various instruments. Oh no, I got rid of it. Of various instruments so that we can have them drag things. Now, if you're using this for your kids, this is totally fine. If you are on TPT, make sure that you're only using pictures that you have the rights to. So that would not be random things on the internet. Um, just a heads up, you never want to get in trouble for copyright infringement. So I'm just clicking on the image I want to edit and then coming over here and making them smaller. So, where'd my trombone go? Ooh, and if you accidentally do something like that, just come over here to undo. And then you won't have Oh, I forgot the trombone, oops. Okay, so then when kids come to this page, they will just drag the answers over to the box. So we'll come and duplicate this slide because I just always do it that way. And we could do, we'll do some linking. All right, so something else you can do is to link to other things. So you can link pretty much anything. So if I wanted to link this text, I would click on the text box, come to insert link. I can either link to another slide in the presentation, so I could have this go back a slide, or I can type in a URL here. So if I had a, I don't have a URL here. We'll go to this. That wouldn't make any sense in this presentation, but since this is just a check it out kind of thing. So now when you do that, you can click here and it takes you to that presentation. My computer's really slow, so it's gonna take like 20 minutes for that to load, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, you can also link to different slides. You could link to YouTube videos. So if I wanted to link here, I would just click on this, right click, copy, and then I don't need to listen to you. And then I can click on either the words or I can click on images. I can also click on shapes. So I can click on the image and then come up to this little link. And then I can paste the video in there. And so now when you click here, it takes you to that YouTube page. If I want to link to something else, so maybe I want, this is a very common thing that I will do, is make a text box, make it a color so that you can see it, and then I'll write like, click here to go back. And then link, and maybe go to like previous slide. So now when you click on this button in presentation mode, it'll take you to previous slide or you can click like that. So a couple little things. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that you can move all of this stuff. So if your kids are either really bored or not very good at technology, they could like really make a hot mess of this presentation. Now, when you assign things, always, always, always have them make a copy. But if you are watching this because you're a TPT seller and you're like, um, I want to use all my clip art and all my pretty stuff in the background and I don't, can't just have people, you know, copying and pasting and moving things, then 
what you can do is we'll insert a new slide. So I'll come to insert, new slide, get rid of these. So something you can do is come up here to background and you can make it choose an image. Now why that's important is that if you are using PowerPoint, in PowerPoint, you can click save as and save as pictures so that it'll save each slide as a picture. You can also do that from a PDF. I'm not going to show you how because I actually have a whole video on that. I haven't decided if it's coming out before or after this video, but it will happen. So I'm just going to show you like an older picture that I have. So I'm going to go to choose image and you can click here. You can search an image. Again, don't use one if you don't own the rights, unless you're just using it for your kiddos, then that's fine. But if you're selling it, click here. Um, you can go to like your Google photos, your Google drive, all those things. I'm going to come down here to my finder. So I can drag a picture over done. And then this is now my background, which means you cannot move it. You cannot copy like this border I got from someone on teachers pay teachers. So I'm not allowed to share it with other people unless it is protected like it is right now. I just can't do anything to it. So this is magical because <laughs> then you can add things over it. So in here, if you wanted to make sure that no one was messing with your background or with your these things, titles, that's what those are called. Or if you wanted to make sure the shape stayed where it was or those kind of things. I also, I do this a lot. I'll make it in PowerPoint, save it as a picture and I'll have the instructions stuck to the background so that kids can't accidentally delete them and then not know what to do. So that is a magical thing. And then you can, again, add a text box, type here. You could add a shape. So this one is where they're supposed to like color the shape to match. So if I wanted to, I could make a square and I could make it the two different colors of this. So I could do that and then I can copy, paste, and then make that one yellow so that they, and I can stick them over here and then they can just drag them to where they go. So that's a really easy way to just make sure that kids can't mess with this. And again, if you're on TPT and you're selling things and you have, you either don't want kids to mess with this or you have, you know, these things you can't sell or if you wanna make sure that you have your logo down here at the bottom, that's how you wanna do it. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over. Of course, this is just scratching the surface. We barely even touched half of these things, but I will say in my experience, these have been the most helpful things for me to know and to figure out. That being said, there's lots more to it. So if you have any questions about what I didn't touch, if you have questions about what I did talk about, if you have other questions about all of this, then please leave them in the comments down below and I will try to answer them. And if we have like enough comments about the same thing, I might make a new video about that particular thing because again, we barely even scratched the surface. So thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments, questions, and video requests down below. And I hope to see you next time. In order to see me next time, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get notifications every time that I post so you don't miss anything. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful week.